The Repowering America's Lands website has a number of useful resources when you start thinking about putting together a report for the analysis that you've run with PV Watts. There are over 40 feasibility studies that are posted on the website that have been done all across the country on contaminated lands. If we scroll down on the website, you can see there are different technologies available. You can expand solar, look at what's available, look at the analysis that's been performed for this technology. There are different states, locations where these studies have been done. Here's one that was done in Massachusetts, so this would be a good point of comparison for the site that we just evaluated. The main objective of putting together a feasibility study is to communicate as much information as possible about the site to parties that are interested in potentially developing the property. So you want to put things in there like a summary of the site, you know, basic description, talking about what it was used for in the past, where it's located, how large the parcel is. It's also important to include things like ownership, you know, who, who holds a stake in the property, does the municipality have any sort of influence over the property. It's also important to take the, the calculations that were performed in PV Watts and put those into the feasibility. So things like how much power the PV system could potentially produce, you know, the calculations that you ran in the spreadsheet, those, those types of things. Those are good pieces of information to put into the feasibility from the calculations that were run. And then also just kind of other general considerations, development considerations. What's the known level of contamination? Is there any energy that is used on site? Is there existing infrastructure? Any piece of information that is relevant to the potential implementation of a PV system on that property should go into the feasibility study right up. And it's also important to put the current state of, of everything and then talk about next steps and, and what resources are available. So if there is an interested party in developing the property, who should they talk to? How should they kick off the interaction with the site ownership or with the parties that, that hold stake in the property? And then finally, it's important to list out resources that are available for developing the site, you know, whether it's the, the local Department of Environmental Quality or whether there is information on the EPA mapper that is relevant to the site. You know, those, those types of resources should also be baked into a feasibility study. Once you have moved the results from the initial analysis over into a report and it looks like the project is feasible, you may want to do a more in-depth analysis and run a more sophisticated model to get even more detailed results and do a little bit more in-depth of a feasibility study for the location. and. The next logical step to run this analysis may be the system advisor model. The system advisor model can run a more detailed economic analysis. It's got more input so you can dig down a little bit more on system characteristics. You can also do a detailed shading analysis or potentially look at things like system losses due to snow load and other more in-depth considerations for system feasibility. And the other thing that is valuable about SAM is the ability to run multiple different scenarios. So you can consider different cost models, different ownership structures, things like that. But if you do an analysis in PV Watts and take a first cut at it, that should give you an idea of whether it makes sense to move forward with additional analysis on the site and whether the site generally makes sense to, to spend more time evaluating.